On Larry King Now, Jerry Springer, the longtime talk show host who's done just about everything. It scares the hell out of me, the idea of not working. On why his show has stood the test of time. Serious newsman, Jerry, a mayor. Why yeah. would you lower yourself to this? You think the talk show is, is lower than politics? <laughs> Are you nuts? <laughs> yeah. If you have a niche, you're going to have an audience because there are always people that are going to want to see those things that are crazy and outrageous. What he thinks of his guests. They're just like us. They want to be happy. They get ticked off when they're not. Their language isn't as good. They don't have the opportunities we maybe have had. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. He is the host of The Jerry Springer Show in its 23rd year. He's also had a new show on Investigation Discovery Channel. It's called Tabloid. It airs on Thursday. It's been on for three weeks. It's already their biggest hit. He's the former mayor of Cincinnati, a political pundit, a lawyer, an Emmy-winning uh, newscaster, an author, a game show host, and more than that, he's an old friend. Jerry has done everything. Great to welcome you aboard to this mic gig. It is always great being with you, Larry. You're going to be 70, huh? Oh, you next are week. 70. No, next week I'm, I'm 70, yes. And I'm 80. Who, who thought? 150 years. And here's there. the good news. Look how good looking we are. <laughs> <laughs> Rattle off the jobs you've had. Go, let's start. Well, first I started out as a lawyer. My first job was with Bobby Kennedy. And uh, then I, uh, so I, and then I was a lawyer. And um, I was a news anchor. And uh, for 10 years, and a news commentator, and mayor of Cincinnati, and then uh, I was uh, my my talk show. Uh, how'd you go from mayor to talk show? Oh, I'm sorry, I went from mayor to news anchor. Uh, uh, how'd you go from oh news anchor led to talk show? Yeah, because uh, I did the news for 10 years in Cincinnati for the NBC affiliate there. They hired me right after being mayor. And the company that owned the station where I did the news also owned Phil Donahue, Sally Jesse Raphael, et cetera. It was multimedia. And Phil was getting close to retirement. So one day they took me to lunch, and the CEO did, Walter Bartlett. And uh, he said, Phil's getting close to retirement. And uh, so we're going to start another talk show, and you're the host. And uh, Bert Dubrow was my first executive producer, and then... Did it start out like it is now? No, it was a normal show in the beginning. <laughs> uh, we didn't get stupid until about three years later. So uh, you had regular guests and... Oh, yeah, we had, like, Oliver North, um, Jesse Jackson. It was mostly a political show. So how did it change? Well, I was drinking. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, the way it changed was... Um, there were 20 talk shows at the time on the air, and everyone was trying to be like Oprah, go after the demographic, which at that time was referred to as middle-aged housewives. And then along came Ricky Lake, and she really was the first talk show to go after the kids. And when I say kids, I mean high school, college age. And so one afternoon, I'm walking down uh, Michigan Avenue in Chicago with our executive producer, and, I, and I, we were talking about the business model. I said, why are we trying to be one out of 20 shows like Oprah? Let's go after Ricky Lake's audience and just be one out of two and go after the kids. So we then decided from now on, we're only going to have young people in the audience, young people on stage, and young subject matter. Well, young people are much more open about their lives, much wilder, crazier. So then the show started to go crazy. Universal comes in and buys us and says, from now on, you can only do crazy. So that, <laughs> as silly as it sounds, that is the truth. We are not allowed to do anything but normal. normal. Why is we have to send you to another man. show. Serious newsman, Jerry. A mayor. Why yeah. would you lower yourself to this? You, Just for money? You, is that it? You think the talk show is, is lower than politics? <laughs> are you nuts? <laughs> yeah. No, it's a step up. <laughs> are you ever embarrassed? No. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I... Look, the show is pure fun for me. I, I You know, I... I enjoy doing it. Thankfully, I don't need to make a living anymore. I'm lucky. Uh, I do it because I just enjoy it. And here's the truth. I enjoy most of the people on the show. I like them. Uh, I mean, some are. I don't. But most I do. And you know what? We're all alike. We just had a better... We lucked out of the better gene pool of parents. Or we dress better. Or maybe we were lucky to get an education or whatever. But they're just like us. 
They want to be happy. They get ticked off when they're not. Their language isn't as good. They don't have the opportunities we maybe have had. Why so do they want to be on television? That has the standard answer, which is the incorrect one. Everyone always says they want their 15 minutes of fame. That's not it at all. First of all, they don't become famous. They don't even use their real names. And oftentimes they use disguises. So that has nothing to do with it. What it does have to do with what I've noticed, it's, for many of them, about the only time in their lives anyone cares or asks them a question. In other words, they live that no one listens to these people. They don't have kids who listen to them. They don't have parents who listen to them. They don't have a job where someone asks what's their, for their advice. What do you think we should do? What's this? They're ignored. Now, for one week in their life, they're getting calls from a national talk show. They get picked up, taken to the airport. They fly to Connecticut. They get picked up in a limo, taken to a hotel. Uh, they come in, they meet the producers. Uh, they get makeup. They go out on stage. People are chanting their name. A national audience listens to whatever their beef is. In their world, this is the biggest issue right now. Mm -hmm. They count. That's what the attraction is. They count. Why do you explain its longevity? Well, because it's stupid. Um, <laughs> it's a stupid show. Who's the viewer? I'll answer the first question first, and then I'll get to uh, Why the longevity? Well, first of all, we have a niche. And you know that business. If you have a niche, you're going to have an audience, because there are always people that are going to want to see those things that are crazy and outrageous. It's appointment. Yeah. So that's, that's the first thing. Secondly is, if you want longevity in television, I believe you have to appeal to young people. And the reason is, our target is the 16 to 23-year-old. The beauty of going for that group is that every year there's suddenly a new group of people old enough to watch. If you do a show that's aimed at 30-year-olds, by the time they're 33, they're bored with the show. Your tastes don't change between 30 and 33. Your tastes do change between 12 and 16. We don't lose our audience. It's because there's suddenly new kids that, you know, it's the giggle factor. Oh, we don't deal with anything serious. We deal with dating. We, we don't deal with, even though people say to me, hey, Jerry, who's the father? That's not our show. That's we, Maury. Yeah, we don't do a pregnancy who test. Who started Jerry, Jerry, Jerry? Uh, someone who stutters. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no, I think, I don't know where it started. It, it just, I think, again, Ricky Lake, the, the kids were always going, go Ricky, go Ricky. Maybe that started it. I honestly, and I've been asked that, I don't know how it started. But now, at our age, I, it, I, it's really helpful because um, it helps me remember who I am. <laughs> now I want them to start chanting my address so I know how to get home. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're on a roll. We'll yeah. talk about two of Jerry's passions when we come back. Politics and sports. Stay with us. We're back with Jerry Springer, one of my favorite people. One more thing about Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Yeah, this is, um, I have a grandson now. Or we have a grandson who's, you know, the center of my life. Anyway, he's starting to recognize now that, you know, who I am. In other words, I must be somebody, because we walk down the street and people are going, Jerry, Jerry, and he's wondering, because he calls me Opa. And then when people are taking pictures, he's always getting into the picture. So one day he asked me, he says, why do they call you Jerry Springer? I said, well, you call me Opa because I'm your Opa, you know, I'm your grandfather, but it, that, that's a name I have, and these people see me because I, I work on television, whatever. So he says, you know, and he kind of put that away. About two or three nights later, we're walking by his room at night, and he's saying his nightly prayers. And we hear through the door, he says, God bless mommy, God bless daddy, God bless Mimi, that's his grandma, my wife, his grandmother. God bless Opa, God bless Jerry Springer. So he's like, he's added to the list <laughs> of Mimi and Opa, Jerry Springer. That's yep. great. God bless him. That's great, and you got the tabloid show, that's about crimes, right? Yes, that's the crime show. And that's a weekly show on, um, on investigation discovery, right? Uh, some quick uh, politics questions, because yes. you're on our politicking show, too. Who's going to run in 16? Well, right now, I think um, Hillary will run. Um, I, do I know for sure? Of course not. I, but I would think she's going to run. 
If she doesn't, then it's open, but then you'd think Biden would, would pick up right away. Republicans, uh, Christie's uh, still got a shot, or is... I don't... I, as a Democrat, I... You know, if we had to have a Republican president at the time, I would think Christie would be all right, because I think he's more moderate on the issues that I care about. But I, I, I think, obviously, he's in political trouble now. It's the nature of our politics today. None of the Republicans are running to his side. I mean, you know, the, the people that are still in office, because they all want to be president. So they're letting him just, you know, wallow there. Drift. Yeah. And so how do you get a national campaign for president when you're mired in this that is not going to go away for the next year? And this is the year where you got to get the fundraiser. So I think the people with the money that want to start backing a moderate, they're going to have to start looking for someone else because he was considered the front runner of the moderates within the Republican Party. Now I think, you know, they may find uh, Kasich in Ohio. They may go after one of the governors. I think they'll probably want to stay away from a senator. Uh, senators, I know Barack Obama got elected, but normally senators don't fare too well in presidential races. What so I think they'll go after a governor or Jeb Bush. This, uh, the Bill Clinton saga is incredible. When you think yeah. of what, of, of his misfortunes personally, yeah. yet even Republicans would say, if Bill Clinton ran, he'd win again. Yeah. Why? And, and I think that's true. We used to think that anyone that served in office was a god. And that's because everything was kept private. We didn't know about the private life of Eisenhower or of a Roosevelt or of a Kennedy or whatever. It was all kept private. So, and we just assumed these were all gods. Well, we have gone through now 50 years of recognizing that, wait a second, they all have clay feet. They're human beings. And if they can do a good job as president, we don't particularly care what their married life and is like. And he did a good job. And he did a good job as president. And he's, he relates. He's the kind of person, and of course, you know him. Um, but when he talks to you, right he's to you. talking to you. He's and that is it. Best. It's not like who else is the Best political figure ever. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Jerry, let's go to sports. Go Yankees. Yeah. Go Dodgers. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, my team's but, favorite in Vegas. Well, yeah. Vegas but knows. We now have uh, Tanaka. We now have Ellsbury. We took him away from the Red Sox. I think this year the Yankees are back in the picture again. And, and so... In a tough division. Yeah, and but, right. And you're playing in the National League, which is a lot easier for pitchers because, you know, you don't have the designated hitter, mm. you know. But I, I think that the Yankees are back in the picture. But you grew up in Brooklyn. I grew up in Queens. Let's talk New York. The Yankees were better than the Brooklyn Dodgers. You had one lucky year in 55. I remember that. That Amaros year. makes that one-handed catch. However. Yes, what? Tell down me. Down through the years. Yes. Probably because of Jackie Robinson. Yes. The Do that Dodger team of the late 40s, 50s. Yes. Is more famous. As probably because of Robinson. Because yes. even my Yankee friends would admit the most exciting player of that era was Jackie Robinson. Yes. Yes, but here's the thing, and this is what people... Yes, you beat us a lot, but Jackie. You, stole. okay, you are Jackie. And I agree. For a Democrat, I certainly should be, have been rooting for the Republicans. I mean, for the, uh, excuse me, for the Dodgers. Right. Because they had, they were the first to integrate. They had the first base coach, Jake Pittler, who <laughs> was the Jewish... Uh, Cal Abrams. Cal Abrams, you know, how could you not? And here I was... In fact, the only part of me that is Republican is that I root for the Yankees because they were, you know, they still wear the pinstripe suits. They're, they're corporate. We were kids in Brooklyn. We'd go to Yankee Stadium occasionally. Yeah. You know what we hated about Yankee Stadium? What? They wore ties. Yes. Well, we knew Yankees. how to they dress. Like now the Yankee yeah. fans are, now the Yankee fans no, are Jerry the, Springer viewers. God bless them. A fight gonna... breaks out on the field. This is true. So I go to the game. This has happened to me twice. The Yankees were playing the Orioles at Yankee Stadium. A fight broke out in the field. The camera people somehow spotted me in the stands, put me up on the jumbotron, and 50,000 people start going, Jerry, Jerry, <laughs> while they're fighting on the mound. We'll find out some little known facts about Jerry Springer next. Our guest is Jerry Springer. He's done everything. He does the prices right at hotels, right? You do a quiz show on the road. Yeah, I, do, I uh, host the live tour, uh, the national tour of uh, the prices right. We do it at theaters and casinos around the country. And then I do like seven weeks in Branson, 
and we do it in Vegas. So and then you yeah. tape your own show, and then yeah. you do you did uh, Broadway, and you did London, you did uh, yeah, uh, Chicago. the musical Chicago. Yeah, that was a yeah. That so was, how do you fit it all in? Um, well, you find out what days you have available, and then you do it. Uh, but it's well, you know, you're the one that would know more than anyone in the world. Is it scares the hell out of me the idea of not working, and it's like I think it is the. Uh, it's not the money. immigrant feeling I yeah. is that it's not the money, yeah. but I don't ever want to live on what I've made. I only want to live on what I'm making, and I'm so afraid that if I stop working, it's going to end. You know, just everything. I love so, going to work. I don't know what I, I do. When I don't people don't go crazy. to work. What do they do? I know. It's As really. Milton Berle said once, "Retire to what? Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? I, yeah, I, I don't, no, I can't do that. So I As, hope I stay healthy. You think fame change you? Change, how to change this a little? I guess, except every, f my close friends, everyone, now there's not, I don't have any friends in show business. I mean, my friend, for example, for my 70th birthday, I, every 10 years, I get together my birthday with the kids I grew up with. You know, I, get, gardens. I see them all the time. You always see them at Nate Niles. And then and, and my and own your place. place. Sorry, your place. Oh, right. I, yeah. I, I yeah. love Nate Niles. Yeah. Water bagels, right. Brooklyn water bagels. And these are the kids I grew up with. Never forget where you came from. Never. You yeah. wanted to be a rabbi? Well, I always, I had, you know, back then, would, none of us had money. We lived in a rent control apartment. And I remember always wanting to be whatever I saw. You know, like, so when I came back from the High Holy Days from Temple, I didn't speak Hebrew, I was a little boy. But I saw the rabbis going like this, so I would stand on my desk and, I, and I'd make it up. Go, hey, 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 hey. My parents would walk by at a sheet over my head. They say, "Oh, Gerald, you're good." And I wanted to be an announcer. I loved baseball, but so, I was never good enough. So we would turn on our black and white television, turn the sound uh, down, and announce the game. Yes. I did the same. Thing. Wasn't that great? Yeah. So I, I used to roll up a scorecard and have its feel like yes, guess the game. Yeah, yeah. I did the same thing. I remember the. Uh, I remember. Did you listen to the fights? With, oh, uh, with Don, Les Don, Kiter. Don, Don, Les, Don Kiter. Les Kiter. And I, to this day, can do the Johansson Patterson fight, the third fight. And oh, with Patterson Les Kiter. won that. The Patterson won, yeah. Johansson won the first one. Right. But the first round of the third fight, here it goes. Les Kiter doing it. Good evening, Americans and everyone across the sea. Johansson and Patterson, the third meeting in the guessing game, right up to ringside. At long range, Patterson, this is the stiff left jab. Is Johansson in the black zones? Both of them in the black zones, backs away. That, down goes Patterson, the right hand landed. The I just, it's crazy, but I just. Memorized it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you thought I was going nuts. <laughs> you uh, did something that I turned down. Why did you do Dancing with the Stars? <laughs> I turned that down. Well, I didn't. I didn't want to work that hard of of every, yeah. those rehearsals. No, that was you. Why was, did you do that? Well, I turned them down at first when I was asked. I turned down. Then apparently, like a few weeks before, someone must have dropped out because they called again, and Katie, our daughter. She kind of talked me into it. She says, Dad, you're always telling me to stretch and to go outside my comfort zone. So here's an opportunity for you to do it. And Katie was uh, pretty soon going to get married. And she says, you'll learn to dance the waltz for the father-daughter dance. So that was the premise. And I said, well, OK, I'll try. And the only reason I stayed on is because people wanted to hurt me. <laughs> because every, you know how they take you off into the side room right after you dance? And you know, you're supposed to call in the votes, and every contestant would always go and call, call, you know. And every week I would go, no, <laughs> stop. How long did you last? Uh, eight weeks. Yeah, so it, well, yeah, I went pretty far down into it. But once I got past the walls, which really was a lovely, for me, it was my best three minutes on television ever, because I had Katie there. I learned to dance the walls to the song, The Tennessee Walls, Patty Page. Um, to, uh, to learn it for the father-daughter dance for the way. I mean, that was just my happiest moment ever on television. So that was great. But otherwise, it was, it, I was too old. It, it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of the, this whole change in television, 500 channels? The whole world becomes inevitably not just more liberal, but more democratic. What we're seeing is the democratization of our culture our politics, as well as our entertainment. And technology makes it happen, and I'll tell you why. 
It used to be for thousands of years that entertainers would stand either on a stage or in the center of the town square or in the forum, and you would sit in the around and watch, whether it was watching a play, watching, uh, listening to a singer, ultimately watching movies, watching television, performer, audience. Along came you and talk radio, where for the first time, you would listen to your show on radio. I remember listening in New York, and the entertainers were the callers. You would listen. And so for the first time, the audience became the entertainment. And then we went to talk television, and we'd watch Phil Donahue for the audience. And then all of a sudden, we had the internet, and kids would go to chat rooms to be their own entertainment. They'd spend the evening talking to themselves. And then all of a sudden, we went to interactive television. So you had American Idol, America's Got Talent, where the audience auditions and the audience votes for who the next star. So it's no longer a couple of guys sitting in Hollywood or a couple of guys sitting in New York deciding who our next stars are going to be. We have become the entertainment, and the audience. And there'll never be another Cronkite, a man who no. is the single figure in news. Never. No, no, That's gone. never. When we come back in our last segment, Jerry will answer your questions. We'll play a game of If You Only Knew. I think we played it already. Don't go away. We're back with Jerry Springer, some social media questions. Music is my life from Instagram says, how do you feel about the lives these people live when they come on your show? Um, I, how do I feel about the lives of the people? I think we're all alike, as I said before. When they come on our show, they're only talk, they don't talk about serious issues. They're talking about dating issues. I mean, they're angry. But the next day, they're dating someone else. So it's not like we don't deal with life and death issues. So we're pretty much of a circus. So how do I feel about these people? I feel that they're young people that are really ticked off right now. But tomorrow, it'll be somebody else. I like most of the people on my show. Mona Monet 23 tweets, are the guests on the Jerry Springer show paid to say all that crazy stuff? No, uh, they're not paid. Because if you paid people to be on the show, then they would start making up stories just to get the money. So no, they're not paid. Bryson Knox Facebook wants to know, what was the worst fight you ever witnessed on the Jerry Springer show? Um, I usually don't see it because I'm running into the audience as they're fighting behind me. I'm pretty much of a wimp. Um, I, Anyone ever get hurt? Not, well, there are cuts and stuff, but no one, no. The security guys are there. They're, all, they're local, they're police officers, Chicago cops or whatever. In fact, Steve has a show. He, he was a Chicago cop, and now he has his own show, Wilco's. That he was on your. He was a. He was the security guy. He's a wild guy. Yeah, <laughs> and he and, and Steve. Uh, so just like Oprah gave birth to um, Dr. Phil, I gave birth to Steve. Steve. It was a. It was a C-section. It was painful. You're proud of this. I'm proud. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nutmeg uh, seventy nine on Instagram. When you were a little boy, what was the? What did you want to be when you grew up? I think you answered that. You wanted to yeah, be first, everything. First, the first a bus driver. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and then I wanted to be a fireman. Then I wanted to be a news and a, a, a sportscaster. Um, Mark Webster on Facebook. After doing the show for this long, what motivates you to keep going? I I love working, and honestly, my show is so much fun to do. Whoever I have dinner with on any night of the year, whoever I have dinner with, and you ask the question, how was your day today? I've always got a better story. Yeah, you do. You know, okay. They're going to say, well, I was working at the insurance company. The boss came in. I say, yeah, yeah. Well, I got a guy who slept <laughs> with his horse. What do you got? <laughs> Come on, top it. <laughs> OK, we play a little game. If you only knew, I throw questions out, you just answer. Most shocking moment on the Jerry Springer show. The guy, actually, the guy who married his horse. <laughs> because You're kidding. No, I'm serious. Uh, Pixel was the name of the horse. <laughs> we did a follow-up show because the horse left him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave uh, it at that. Yeah, yeah. What's the favorite thing about hosting the show? Um, the Other people. than the paycheck. The people. Um, they're, they're fascinating people. I just love talking to regular people. They're not celebrities. No one knows them. They're just regular folks. And you can see they are so happy to be on the show. Even if it's a crazy thing, they're ticked off about something. But it's like, I just love talking to regular folks. Remember the first girl you ever kissed? Um, yes. 
What was her name? Phoebe Nelaboff. Phoebe Nelaboff? Yes, and she stood me up at the... Uh, How old were you? Um, probably was in, uh, in junior high. No, senior. No, I was, it was senior yeah. high. Yeah. Senior. Where was this? Uh, where? On the third floor. <laughs> no, I mean... In, no. <laughs> in what city? Yeah, oh, New York City. I got stood up for the senior prom. Stood up, okay? I'd never, honestly, I'd never had a date. I, I didn't start dating until college. You had the flower? Everything. She calls up the, and, and I was the shortest kid in school. I mean, I'm, you know, I grew to be six feet, but in high school I was very short. And I never dated. I just didn't have dates. I was in, whatever. But so, my sister talked to me, you gotta, Gerald, you gotta go to the senior prom, and all my friends were going. So I call up Phoebe. Phoebe. She, I should have changed her name because she's going to call in. Anyway, but, uh, so she stood me up. And she, well, here's how she stood me up. The day before she called, she says, I'm not feeling well. A lot. How do you know how you're going to feel tomorrow? Correct. So night of my senior prom, my mom and dad take me to dinner at the Turnpike Restaurant on Queens Boulevard in New York. I'm sitting with my mom and dad having dinner. Ashanda. And all, Ashanda and all the kids, and they felt so bad for me. It was horrible. Wow. Favorite food? Anything Italian or a cheeseburger. Anything you haven't done in your life you'd like to do? Be president. But I, if you could buy anything in the world without looking at the price, what would you buy? Great question. I don't know because people ask me now because my birthday, and you know I'm lucky. I've managed to buy things if I want them. Yeah, you could buy anything you want. Well, yeah, I don't know. Most fascinating person you know. My wife. What can't you live without? My family. Is there an, a TV show you watch? You're embarrassed to admit you watch. The Jerry Springer Show. <laughs> <laughs> What's the character trait you most value in other people? Honesty. Who intimidates you the most? Or what intimidates you? Meanness. You have a guilty pleasure. All my pleasures are guilty. I'm, gu <laughs> I'm guilty of all my pleasures. You're, You're the, the best, best Jerry. You, you yeah. said it the same time. <laughs> yeah. Thanks to my guest, Jerry Springer. Remember, you can find me on Twitter at Kingsthing. See you later. <laughs>